Hello and we're back and here's yet another five really, really bad TV shows. It all started with us, the cavemen. Since day one, our people have always been where the action is. Cavemen was an American sitcom that aired on ABC from October the 2nd to November the 20th in 2007. It was developed by Joe Lawson, Josh Gordon and Will Speck. The show drew inspiration from the G-E-I-C-O, well, how do you say that, Geico, I don't know, Cavemen TV commercials apparently, which were also penned by Lawson. At Geico.com, you can handle all your car insurance needs online. It's so easy, a caveman could do it. <laughs> Seriously, we apologize. We had no idea you guys were still around. Yeah, next time maybe do a little research. <laughs> Gentlemen, are we ready to order? I'll have the roast duck with the mango salsa. I don't have much of an appetite, thank you. Marketed by the network as a unique buddy comedy, challenging stereotypes and race relations, supposedly, it unfolds in San Diego, California. However, despite its initial promise, the series faced widespread criticism and garnered a reputation as one of the worst television shows ever produced. You know that crunchy cave chick that works at the bookstore? Cat glasses, flat ass. Punk stud. Bingo. You know, he's been in there five times in the last month. Hey, listen, you know I'm not one to pass judgment, but I would so appreciate it if when I'm trying to show a unit to prospective tenants, if you and your friends could keep down that primal grunting that you do. Hey, Joel. Okay. Don't even start, okay? What are you talking about? I was just gonna ask if there are any raisin buns left. Oh. You're watching KBBO Fox 42. Tribes emerged briefly as a daily half-hour soap opera on Fox in 1990, crafted by seasoned soap writer Leah Lyman, with a specific focus on captivating a teenage audience. It was described by Lyman as a fusion of daytime soap opera, MTV and after-school specials. Tribes unfold in Southern California, centering on a cohort of teenagers with an aim to engage the teen and preteen demographic. The series seeks to capture viewers before they delve into their homework or evening activities. Executive producer Dennis Steinmetz, known for his work on CBS's The Young and the Restless and The Bold and the Beautiful, emphasised the relevance of teen-oriented content during school breaks, highlighting the genre's popularity among young audiences. And yes, it was sh- I guess you want Mama back, huh? Actually, I want you to cut the crap. Why are you really here? Well, how about Peter? He's cute and he obviously likes you. Peter's a year younger than I am. <gasps> Ew, disgusting. Yeah, he's really got his nerve bothering you. Well, he does. I mean, he's always bugging me. Baby. Hey. Hey? Hello. That's right. This time I'm not leaving without you. Hey, you make me! You're hitting me. Hot shot, white boy. I'm gonna wipe the street up with you. Yeah? Before we get to In his first solo venture following the passing of his writing partner Harry Driver, Vince Powell returned with The Whackers. The series chronicles the escapades of the Clarkson family, residents of Liverpool's Dingle area, grappling with religious divisions, being half Catholic and half Protestant, and football rivalries. Half the household is Liverpool FC supporters, and the other half supported Everton. And it was set amidst the backdrop of the impoverished Dingle neighbourhood, and the premiere episode introduces Dad, 
played by Ken Jones, returning from a purported stint at sea, which is soon revealed to be a term of imprisonment. Hey, I was just saying to you, Mrs, last night I was looking forward to meeting you. Oh, aye. Aye. She's round here most nights regular, for a chat and a bevy. Yeah. Oh. Aye. He's been very good to me, as Charlie. Well, I must say, that's very nice. There's me stuck in prison for the past two years, and you're in there every night gallivanting with another fella. Well, what did you expect me to do? Shut myself up in a bloody convent? Who's bought all these for me? Nobody's bought you anything. <laughs> you're supposed to have been sailing all over the world. They're presents from you for everybody else and all the places you've been to. <laughs> oh, we all knew that. We're not bloody daft. We've known all along. How did you find out? Was in the echo. Oh. <laughs> I've never had my name in a paper before. <laughs> and it was only a few lines. Australia's naughtiest home videos emerged as a one-off television programme on the Nine Network on September the 3rd, 1992. It was a spin-off of the popular Australia's funniest home videos and this special presentation diverged from its predecessor by featuring videos depicting sexual situations and other explicit content. However, the programme's controversial content led to its abrupt removal from the airwaves during its inaugural broadcast following an order from then network owner Kerry Packer. Apparently during a dinner engagement, Packer received word about the content of the show and intrigued he tuned into TCN9 to witness the broadcast first hand. However, as soon as he saw the material that was being broadcast, Packer was deeply offended and he promptly contacted the studio operator expressing his vehement disapproval with the directive, get that shit off the air. Please, please, may you... Be prosperous and grow to an enormous size. I said I wanted a big orchestra like they have for Ray Martin on the Midday Show, and this is what I finished up with. Sort of like a hetero right said Fred. <laughs> and you thought the Lambada was the forbidden dance. Look at these girls, they think they're hopping. But Peppy here, he thinks he's jumping. Gluteus Maximus, or bum, has one of the most attractive features of the opposite sex. Well, they'll get no argument from me, but I should warn that the following collection of rear ends are not all sexy. OK, Ben, first I want to check your low tackle, then your wedding tackle. <laughs> we apologise for this interruption. Unfortunately, a technical problem prevents us continuing our scheduled programme for the moment. In the meantime, we bring you a brief alternative programme. It's neither. It's Mozart. It's bad, is what it is. And What a Dummy, an American sitcom TV series airing in syndication from September 29th, 1990 to May 25th, 91. The show aimed to capitalise on the success of popular series like Alf and Small Wonder, embracing a similar premise of an ordinary American family harbouring a peculiar thing hidden from the outside world. Centred on the Brannigan family of New Jersey, the series revolves around the patriarch Ed Brannigan and his wife Polly, sons Tucker and Corey and daughter Maggie. The tale unfolds when the family inherits an antique trunk from Ed's late great-uncle Jackie Brannigan, a former ventriloquist, and within the trunk lies Buzz, Jackie's ventriloquist dummy, who possesses remarkable abilities to move, talk and think independently. Despite Buzzer's initial discontent with his decades-long confinement, he soon integrates into the Brannigan household, where he becomes a cherished member. However, they must, of course, conceal Buzzer's unique nature from prying eyes, most notably their next-door neighbours. Oh, this is great! All these years, you, know, you call me a nerd and a geek. Yeah, don't forget dweeb and wuss. <laughs> You're finally starting to appreciate me. Right on, Cor. Is Corey home? Yeah, I'm... Uh, right here. <laughs> Hi, Joanne. Hi. Joanne, where's your mole? <laughs> you could steal Julia Child's personality this time. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're not doing this just to get back at me, are you? 
No, you like her, don't you? What? And there you have it. There's another five of the worst TV shows ever made. You keep them coming in the comments because I am making a list and we will put some of these out on videos. Hit the like button, please. It's the thumbs up button. Just give it a click. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Share the video with your friends and all that good YouTube-y stuff. Bye for now.